Hey, what's going on everybody? Alex here with Freedom Mowers. I hope you all are doing well. Today is going to be part three of our turning a free push mower into $2,000. I am going to make a playlist so you guys can follow along. But in our first one, we had that free push mower that we ended up selling for $120. We took the $120 and I was able to acquire a free riding mower after that as well. Uh, we ended up spending $100 on that machine, so we were left over with $20. And we ended up selling that machine for 400 So we have $420 in our pocket to spend. And I will show you guys right now our next uh, mower that we acquired. All right. So you guys saw in the picture, uh, I tried to get it for 200 The guy didn't want to budge. Uh, I can't really say as I blame him, although this has some mildew and stuff like that on it this is a very clean machine this is a 2018 Poland Pro PP 19 a 42 so 19 horsepower automatic drive 42 inch cut and I believe that this unit is very low hour when I got there and started looking over this thing I'll show you guys some of the little details on it uh, as far as things I've noticed the deck itself is in almost mint shape the deck belt looks very good the pulley on it looks almost brand new i mean almost everything on it just underneath of the dirt and grime looks very new still has the sticker on the mowing deck for the reinforced uh, deck plate that they put on i think that's an option that you can pay extra for so i probably will take that off uh, scuff it and repaint that because i want it to look really nice as long as this thing is not blown up. I did spin it over by hand when I was there and it felt like it had compression. Guy did say that the battery was basically dead on it. And I don't know, Let's see if we can find a year on it. November of 18. This is a Husqvarna made tractor and there are the part numbers for you guys. Now this does have the plastic transmission. I know a lot of people very much dislike these. I've had some problems in the past and I've also had some that worked out just fine. I guess the biggest thing with these is making sure that you keep the transmission clean of grass and debris. Let's go ahead and just check over. I can't remember if I even looked at the air filter on this thing. Launch that. Air filter doesn't look too bad. Don't have a rag out here, so I won't be able to wipe the stick, but oil looks very clean. It's right on the low mark, though. Uh, I don't know if there was any gas in it. It looks almost green, and there's about a half tank, so that's going to be getting drained out. Um, like I told you guys, the engine was free. Oh, yeah definitely has good compression feels like uh, I showed you guys the deck belt blades are basically shot on it so that's a quick overview of what we go got going on with it I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing pulled in the shop uh, we'll take a closer look at that oil again and we're gonna see if we can put some starter fluid in it and see if we can get it to pop off and then we'll just take it from there and now we can check the oil now that we're on a flat surface I was on a little bit of a slope earlier and I also didn't have a rag to wipe so it's just barely above the low mark but this oil looks super clean so I will go ahead and top a little bit of that off I need to get my bottle set up with some two-stroke fuel I'll just go ahead and use the two-stroke fuel instead of the starting fluid uh, that way we can kind of help lube up the cylinder as we're trying to start this and it'll start up just as easy as well So let me get set up and we'll try to see if we can get the same cranking over All right, and before we go squirting anything in there I've got the jumper pack hooked up Got my two-stroke fuel here set up uh, We'll go ahead and set the Parking brake and see if we can actually get this to turn over. Turns over just fine. 
So instead of checking for spark and compression and everything else, you can simply just put a splash down in here and know the answer to all of that in one swoop. Go ahead and put a little bit down in there. Give it some choke. Make sure the choke arm is working. And it is. Actually, we shouldn't need choke because we just poured fuel in it. So here we go. You guys heard that. Easy peasy. I say that, but the carburetor is probably destroyed. Let's see. I'll go ahead and try to just bottle feed it for a second. And just real quick, if you guys like this kind of content, please think about hitting that uh, subscribe, giving me a thumbs up, and I love hearing from you guys in the comment section. So, Let's see if we can feed it for a minute, keep it running. <laughs> I'm gonna say that that's a pretty healthy sounding engine. I um, can't remember if I told you guys the backstory on this. The guy just told me pretty much that they had used it for a couple of years. It was too big for their yard. Um, his wife actually liked using the push mower more and this kind of just sat parked and then it wouldn't start a couple of years ago and it's been sitting under a tarp since. So that's basically the backstory on it and it is a 2018 with a 2018 battery so uh, basically original battery it's just was probably used for a couple of seasons parked and here we are so i guess our next step will be i'm gonna go ahead and get you guys set up i'm gonna probably just take the whole tank off from here uh, because i'm gonna want to clean it and empty all that fuel out and then we're gonna have to take, I don't know if we have to take the shroud off on this one to clear that carburetor. I'm gonna see if I can do it without pulling that off. But yeah, we'll get the gas line off, we'll get the tank out, we'll pull this carb. This one does have a Walbro on it, which is nice instead of a Nikki carb. And I will go ahead and get the ultrasonic cleaner warmed up as well. And yeah, hopefully this uh, transmission isn't troublesome either and we should be in pretty good shape as long as all that works out so let's get going it's gonna be uh three eighths it looks like for these two bolts to get the tank off it's got two bolts got washers on those and then we have a vent line that goes right to the tube on the uh, air filter plastic neck, I guess you'd call it. <clears throat> then we just gotta take our fuel line off. Yeah, we should be all loose up here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this hose pulled up and out. Trying to make as least mess as possible here. There we go. And now I'll feed this gas line over here. Oh, man, there's a lot of fuel in this thing. All right. One gas tank removed. Now it might not be as bad as it looked earlier. I don't know. We're gonna find out together. It looks pretty green to me. I've got an old orange juice bottle here. We're gonna start draining into it so we can kind of just take a look. Show you guys here in a second. We'll be able to see if there was water in there too. I'm just gonna gravity feed a little bit into this uh, bottle and then I'm gonna put the rest of it into something else. Because there's probably at least a gallon in here. Alright. See what we got. I 
if you guys can see that or not it's not too bad it just has like a greenish tint to it i don't see any water collecting down in the corner so that's a good sign all right well i'm gonna finish draining that tank here in a minute but i think i'm pretty sure we should be able to clear without having to pull up the housing on this one because it'll just be the two uh nuts here take off the crankcase breather hose right there on the back and we'll go ahead and disconnect our fuel solenoid but let me get you guys set up and we'll take this carb off too and get looking in that i always forget on these two there's like a little i think it's a quarter inch um screw that goes into the plastic but we'll grab that in just a minute So we got one, two, we'll see if that one's a quarter inch, I think it is, it's right up here at the top, and I think I might have been wrong, we might have to loosen up that housing. Yeah, that one's not going to clear, so i got to just loosen up. There's four three-eighths around the outside, and I'll show you guys when we're getting this out. All right, I took out three of them. I lifted up a little bit, and now we are good. I guess the O-ring stuck to it. This actually stays in that uh, that intake tube there, so we'll put that back in. And now we've got our 5 sixteenths. Two studs out, take the choke arm out, give it a twist, and there she is. It actually looks pretty clean, but I'd rather just go ahead and pull it off now and get this thing in. We'll, we'll crack it open, take a look at it, but I'll most likely just run this through the ultrasonic cleaner for a little bit, and uh, hopefully this thing will be ready to go. All right, I was trying to find a wrench that would fit my two uh, specialty ones that I use that are kind of filed down. Seemed like they wanted to keep slipping, but I do have a 13 that actually fit between the bowl and the uh, <laughs> and the solenoid. Now we're stuck. I'll just take it all the way off. All right. Well, that's not stuck. It's a little gummy, but not too bad. Yeah, that thing is on there. I'm going to try not to tear our O ring here. Just gonna see if I can walk it around or maybe take it off the bowl. Seems like it's stuck more to the carburetor. All right, there we go. That actually does not look too bad. Is our float stuck? Yeah, look at the float. Sitting all the way up. Wait, hold on. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Tell me if you guys see something wrong here. Now, I'm just going to tell you that somebody's been in here before. And... This float is on upside down. That's crazy. I've never seen that before. It's like, why is it coming up when it's not supposed to? Yeah, that guy said that 
I don't know. He said he hadn't messed with it, but uh, I can tell you that this float would not be upside down from the factory. So let me get some pliers. I got to pull that uh, arm out. That's crazy. Well, I can tell you that's why one reason why it won't run. All right, I just got that arm pulled out. You know, just when you think you've seen it all, that jet really doesn't look too bad in there. Let's see. Holy. Got specialty stuff for uh, a lot of these things. I, this flathead I've shaved down to fit down into the uh, emulsion tubes here so that I can get these jets out. It has a wide um, end on it, so it fits almost exactly into the jet like it's supposed to, because a lot of these get stuck and you'll tear up the jet. They do make a Briggs & Stratton screwdriver for these, but <laughs> yeah, you guys, I don't know if you can see or not, but there you go. That is nice and clear. This one does have a, I guess this would be to clean out the idle jet on here. Or is this the idle jet? Yeah, this is the idle jet on here. So there's two, there's a port on either side, and then you have the actual opening at the end. So we're going to have to make sure that's cleaned out. And there's definitely some crust on here as well. But we had a rubber tipped needle looks like it could be grooved a little bit so we should have a metal seat down in there so i'm not too worried about damaging that in the ultrasonic cleaner so i'm just going to go ahead and put this in as is i'll work on cleaning these jets out and then i'll show you guys once this stuff's all cleaned up but there's really not a whole lot that i'd be able to show besides just putting carb cleaner cleaning these out running everything through the ultrasonic cleaner all right, and I just hooked up the anti-backfire. Let me see if I can reach the key while I'm close enough here. And you guys can see that is retracting just like it's supposed to. So now I am just gonna go in the reverse order. I've gotta remember to put that gasket on. I've got the O-ring that goes between the solenoid and the carburetor. I'm gonna finish cleaning out that tank I did empty it. It's over there just kind of drying out right now. So I'm going to get all that reassembled and then we will see if we can get a first actual start on this thing. All right. Well, I finished cleaning out the tank. I blew it out with the air. I've got some mechanical fingers and I used a paper towel to just dry up what I couldn't get out. Um, about as clean as I can get in that tank and everything looks good. Uh, the lines were still nice and pliable, so I'll just keep those. I did just put a new fuel filter on here, and I do need to trim a little bit off the end because this filter is larger than the other, and loosely have the cover on. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that, button it up. We're going to just put a little splash of some fuel in here and see if we can get this thing running. And, all right, well, here we go. Jumper pack is still hooked up from earlier. Our parking brake is set. We'll go ahead and let me check the choke again. We're working there. So here we go.
I mean, that started right up, though. I think that... I think these normally are kicked down a little bit for the governor, and it seemed like the cable was adjusted a little bit wrong, too, so... I don't know. I'm pretty sure the fiddle fairies have been in here messing with stuff. Because that doesn't quite seem right. It still seems like it's off, but... Let me try to adjust it a little bit. Because basically the hand, the throttle handle is not bottoming it out. It's going like two-thirds of the way down. So, I'll see if we can adjust that a little bit. Yeah, see, now that's all the way right. And then we're up, so that's full throttle. And then right above that, our choke is working just like it should. So, yeah, I think that's right right there. Now that I made that little adjustment, I may have to go back up and turn the idle up a little bit. Let's see. See if it'll fire right back up too. Maybe not. I think the carburetor's flooding out. Maybe not. See, this is why I left all this stuff loose. Now, somebody did leave in the comments the other day to bolt up the carburetor and then just leave it loose for a little while, which I should have done, but trying to get this thing rolling for you guys too, because if you just let it sit there, then it's not gonna flood the engine out. I'm not seeing anything flooding though. I might have just backed the idle down a little too far. Let me raise that back up. I think I went about a quarter of a turn, so. Nothing drastic. I'll see if it'll fire up. Uh, we should have no issue with fuel flow. You know what? I don't think I put enough gas in there. I'm looking at it. And I don't think that it's up above the... Uh... Yeah, it's like just bare. It's just bubbling some down in there right now. See, sometimes it's a little stuff. Well, basically just ran out of gas. All right, let me top that off a little bit and we'll double check again. All right, just put a little extra splash in there. We should be good. These tanks, um, that piece sits up a little high. There's like that little rubber stud, and if it doesn't get over that lip, it it won't fill up the carburetor, so. Pretty good right there. That's a smooth runner. It'll idle back a little bit more once we get the air filter on there as well. It'll kind of help give it a little restriction
awesome. This thing sounds good. I was going to mention too, since we were, I was talking about earlier, uh, the belts on here. I did take a peek, which I can't really see. I'll show you guys uh, in a little while, but I did look at the drive belts and they all look like they're almost brand new. Uh, it has the drive belt here on the upper and then there is a, a cogged belt that goes on these plastic transmissions and everything looks good a lot of times these do have the axle seals um, that come out and this one looks fine I mean everything on this machine looks solid steering f still feels tight um, I believe that this piece did pop out and spun around or somebody put it on wrong yeah see this thing's backwards somebody's been messing with it that's what i do now yeah see that's how that's supposed to go but we'll go through all this we'll get the front end greased we'll, we'll go through everything on the machine but that's awesome gonna go ahead and start it back up i'm gonna try to disconnect the cables and see if the charging system will at least continue to feed the battery and keep it running and then real quick we'll test to see if this transmission is going to work and i guess we could try to kick the deck on too although i just want to make sure these pulleys aren't seized they're kind of yeah see the belt's kind of rust welded let me check the other side too that one's spinning free we should be okay in the front all right well let's give it a whirl here huh park and brake is set i did have it running so we shouldn't have to choke sticking over here. But our belt's still on, the deck sounds good. It's got a flat tire, I believe, on this side. Sounds really smooth. Not bad, not bad, guys. What do y'all think? That's exciting. So far, it's running, driving, and can cut. I guess I go air up that tire. Definitely have some kind of pulley making a bunch of noise down there.
Nice. That is awesome. It was actually really quiet when I disengaged the clutch the first time, but uh, you guys saw after driving it there for a second. It definitely sounds like there's an idler or something down there that's making some noise as soon as you um, let up on the on the clutch and that uh, foot pedal drive was sticking a bit, but it's probably just a little sticky from sitting so long. Probably be a good idea just to go ahead and take the mowing deck off. We can check the condition of the pulleys underneath. Um, take a look, a real good look at the drive belts on here. And just make sure everything looks kosher. But so far it's looking pretty good. That transmission feels good. It's not noisy. That noise I heard was something in the in an idler. All right, mowing deck is off, and I got this thing lifted up, so let's take a look at what we got going on down here. So right off the bat, our drive belt looks to be in really good shape. Let me get this thing set up here. Yeah, that looks to be in really good shape so we'll start from the back that idler that one feels good that one feels good this one's getting stuck And there's a flat spot on it too, where the belt was burning it. Let's take this off. Yep. Yeah. Our bearing must have kind of seized up. And we burnt the pulley with the belt, so it's got a flat spot. So I will go ahead and pull that off. Whoops. We'll have to see probably a 9 16ths on that one. Let me get a wrench and we'll get that pulled off. Got it cracked loose. It is a 14 millimeter. I just broke it loose with the breaker bar, but we'll try the impact down here. I'll put it up on number three. Sorry, trying to hold you guys one handed under here. And then we just lost a washer. So we're gonna have to get all that back together. Cause that's on that tension spring, but we'll be able to press that back up there. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, you guys can see that flat spot. Bummer. That's why it was quiet. We started it up yesterday and then I guess the bearing must have kind of froze on it. And uh, then it just ended up flat spotting it from the belt. But let me see if I have another flat idler in this size. And that looks like everything that was going on down there. Um, so yeah, all of our idlers look good. The belts look good. I gotta check that deck belt, but I'm sure that's good. And then we'll have to figure out here on the bottom off that, uh, the pedal for the transmission. We'll have to kind of lube up everything there too to get that moving a little more free. I think everything's just kind of seized up from sitting for a couple of years. All right, and I went out to my stash of parts and I got another idler. This one was in good shape. Bearing was good. I did just take the dust seal off though and put some extra new grease in there, some red and tacky. Uh, this old bearing was pretty crunchy in the other one too that was flat spotted. So we should be pretty good shape with this one. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this on and then I'm gonna figure out where that pivot point is for the uh, forward and reverse pedal. 
and I'll show you guys getting that lubed up and then we should be able to test to make sure this transmission is a little bit quieter and we can move on to seeing if there's any issues with the deck and we'll go ahead and finish up with that and get it mounted as well all right I've got the pulley mounted back up everything looks good down there I did go ahead and start spraying a little bit of oil there's uh, basically a pivot point right here uh, one right on the back side and then I did the inside of the frame rail and then basically there's a rod that goes back to the transmission I sprayed the linkage there and I did go ahead and pull the battery out and you can see the transmission down there I just got the one there's one pivot point down there where that rod connects from the foot pedal and everything feels pretty good now it's springing back like it should so hopefully uh, it'll work much smoother now and we won't have that sticking that we were so i think we are in pretty good shape as far as that goes and we'll just go ahead and check out this mowing deck all right and i did go ahead and take the deck belt off from here i'll show you guys the condition on this it is almost brand new looked around it there are no cracks or anything like that the idlers on here are buttery smooth no noise on those and I'll see if I can do this one handed spindles are pretty quiet on here there's a little bit of noise but honestly I think they just need some run time very little wear on both pads and then as far as the top side here everything is in like mint condition there was a little rub from the belt and on the bottom side of the deck it looks good surface rust um, blades we've already looked at um, this one you can see the lift uh, side is missing a chunk on this one but I'll show you guys real quick you can see on my metal tray there I did a little bit of painting yesterday but I had a set of used blades off another 42 inch and I sharpened these balanced them and put a coat of paint on them yesterday and they seem to be in really good shape so we should be good just throwing these on there other than that I think we'll be in good shape so all right so i've got the mowing deck all washed off and this thing looks really really good i did go ahead and just put a coat of paint on this uh, deck armor here for the edge i'll go ahead and finish that pop the blades on and then we're going to jump back to the machine and see if what we did with the new pulley on there if it's going to drive solid for us and see if that transmission is still sticking so i'll show you guys once i'm cranking this back up we're going to try a cold start on this since yesterday and see how it's going to act. And hopefully we've got that noisy pulley figured out. Park and brake set.
think we got this thing solved. Oh, uh, did we run out of gas and I don't have any more gas in the gas can? I bet we did. Uh, I don't know. Of course, we don't have any juice in our battery. I'm going to go ahead and get the jumper pack. I'm going to get this pulled over to the pressure washer and get this thing pressure washed and cleaned up because we are supposed to be getting some nasty rain overnight and I want to get this cleaned up the best I can so that I can spend some time in the shop tomorrow just getting this thing detailed up. All right, and this thing cleaned up pretty nice after a pressure wash. I did have to scrub those rubber center caps. They had some like mildew that didn't want to come off. The typical gas tank on these. There's that mildew that just embeds itself in the plastic. And we'll try to get a little bit of the, more of that off, but engine looks really good on here. Under the hood, definitely still some spots I can wipe down. But I will show you guys because a lot of people are like, oh man, it just needed a pressure wash and a carb clean. And you're spending all this extra time just wasting your time. Well, no. I don't know if you guys can see or not how hazy this paint is. There's like a bunch of overspray on it too. And it is rough, like rough texture as well. So I am going to spend probably the next couple of hours, probably not today, but tomorrow. I'm going to take the lenses off clean out the inside of the headlights, buff those, buff the whole machine. You guys can see here on the back too. I mean, it is clean, don't get me wrong, but to bring that shine back, we're gonna have to spend some time on it. Seat is in good shape though, no tears, still relatively pliable. On the back here, there is some surface rust on this back plate, so I'm probably gonna end up painting uh, at least the bottom portion of this tray here. Uh, I gotta figure out something to do with this rusty transmission disengage. Seat springs were pretty rusty on here. It's just little things that I want to clean up in order to get top dollar out of this machine. Down here on the shift selector, you guys can see it's pretty rusty. Uh, paint's faded up here. I'm gonna take a white paint pen and touch up all those dials. So. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this kind of content. You guys that have been subscribed for a while, you guys know how I like to turn these around at the end and try to make them look as absolute best as I can and get top dollar out of the machines because I'm here by myself putting in the work and I feel like if I can make them the best that they can that I can at least ask for a premium price at the end of the day. So I'm hoping we can probably get about $800 for this machine when we're done. I am gonna get to work. I gotta put this back in here and start taking parts off and then buffing everything but i will show you guys when i'm done with that and then we're going to do a full test on it um, transmission make sure everything is good to go the reason it stalled out earlier i didn't even think about that battery is so dead that when i bring it down to idle the voltage regulator is just not putting enough current out to keep the uh, fuel solenoid going so it was just turning off the fuel because i just sat there uh, with the jumper pack on it, it idled for a while. As soon as I took it off, it died again. So that is pretty much it. So I will check in with you guys when I get this thing all buffed and ready to go and show you guys how good it can look. All right, guys, and here it is. Finally got done detailing this. I spent, I don't know, a couple hours going over it, buffing it, hoping that it's going to pick up in the light out here. It is pretty bright. Uh, but yeah, buffing it. Uh, went through kind of shined everything up with the ATF Told you guys I was gonna paint the deck guard on here Got that all taken care of. I went ahead and painted the uh, deck height um, Panel there as well And I wasn't really sure I didn't want to paint the springs on here I did I don't know. I just didn't want it to look kind of cheap So I just took them to a wire wheel and cleaned up all of the surface rust that was on there We've got us a brand new battery in here. Um, what else do we got? We had the new oil filter, uh, new fuel filter in here. We had topped off the oil. I did get that good use set of blades on here. And this thing looks awesome. You guys let me know what you think. I mean, honestly, this thing looks almost brand new. I know that tank 
could use a little more cleaning up but yeah this being a 2018 i know this is a low hour machine or it was just extremely well taken care of but yeah i am really happy about it i'll crank it up and then i'm gonna get the tripod we're gonna do a little cutting with it lights in there they don't really flash like that it's the frame rate of the camera All right guys well did have just a little bit of sticking on that pedal still i think it just really needs driven it uh it does work really well um i think it just needs to have a little bit of working back and forth but honestly i mean the transmission feels amazing on this thing you guys could see in there i mean this thing almost pulls wheelies um once you, if you give it like full gas so i am really really happy with this unit i mean for 250 bucks you guys see this thing turned out really nice i'm thinking we can probably sell this for about 800 to 850 in my area let me know what you guys think what this would sell for in your area i mean this is a husqvarna made tractor i know a lot of people think poulon honestly it's just it's a black colored husqvarna at the end of the day so couldn't be happier with it and we're gonna try to make some money and i don't know we'll see we may have to go through one more riding mower and then hopefully we can pick up a uh, zero turn for this challenge to meet our $2,000 goal and uh, I'll let you guys know on the next video uh, what our tally is up to as far as how much money we've got and what we're spending uh, but we are doing good so I really appreciate you guys sticking by and uh, checking out the channel we're growing and there's a lot of new viewers so I really appreciate that so on that note let freedom ring let those small engines sing I'll see you all in the next one